Hello guys, today we are going to be talking about how to graph quadratic equations. Um, so we are going to start with an equation and then we're going to get it on our graph. And so um, we're going to start by graphing in our standard form and then we're going to be moving on to um, page the top of page 3 and how to graph from our vertex form. So we're going to start with the standard form. And um, remember the standard form of the equation is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And a, b, and c are, can be any number, but a cannot be zero because we have to have an x squared for it to be a quadratic, all right? And the first step that we're gonna do is we are going to, when we have it in standard form, we can find our axis of symmetry. And um, we can do that with this lovely equation right here x equals negative b over 2a. And then step two, we are going to find the vertex by plugging in our x value from the axis of symmetry. We'll be able to find our y value for our vertex. And then step three, we're going to graph um, four more points. So once we find our vertex, we can graph the other points. And um, we can also do this, um, we can do this by hand, which is what we're going to do, and then I'm also going to show you guys how to do that with a calculator. And some really big tips to remember is that um, the C value, all right, is our Y intercept, all right? That's super important to remember that the C value is your Y intercept, okay? Like, triple exclamation points, super important to remember. And remember, we need to graph four points, but remember guys, because of the axis of symmetry, we can reflect points over the axis of symmetry, the AOS, okay? So we can reflect points over that axis of symmetry. So those are gonna be really important. And see, that's where it said we can graph two on each side of the axis of symmetry. So we'll be able to reflect it in order to do that. So let's get started with our first problem, okay? So we have y equals x squared minus four x minus five. So what I want you guys to do is we are going to identify our a, our b, and our c. And now remember, it's ax squared plus bx plus c. So in this equation, our a is the coefficient to our x squared, so it's just one. Our b is the coefficient to our x, so it's gonna be negative four. And our c is going to be the coefficient um, is going to be our constant, which in this case is negative five, right? So what we are going to do now is we are going to find our axis of symmetry using this equation. X equals negative B over two A. So we are going to use our B over two A. So how we're gonna write that is we're gonna say, okay, X is equal to negative b, which my b is negative 4, over 2 times a, which is just 2 times 1. So in this case, my axis of symmetry right here would be negative of negative 4 is going to be a positive 4 over 2 times 1, which is just 2, and that equals 2, all right? So this would be my axis of symmetry right here. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, x is equal to 2. So we got our axis of symmetry. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use that x value to go ahead and find our y value for the vertex. So what we're going to do is we use our original equation, this y equals, and we are going to plug in our x value right here, all right? So I'm gonna do this in purple, just so we have something different. So remember, our original equation was y equals x squared. Well, my x is two, so I'm gonna say two squared minus four times x, which is just two and then minus five. 
So all I did was I plugged in my two, my value for x here on the axis of symmetry for the x in the original equation. So we have y equals two squared, which is four, and then minus four times two, minus eight, minus five. So four minus eight minus five is going to give me what? Negative four minus five, so that's going to be a negative nine. So my y value in this case would be negative nine for my vertex. So now when we look at our vertex, we see that my x value is two and my y value is negative nine. So we have found our vertex and our axis of symmetry. Now that we have found our vertex and our axis of symmetry, we can go ahead and graph that. So I'm gonna go ahead and graph my vertex here. So my vertex is going to be down here at, let's see here, positive two and negative nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and graph that, all right? And then I'm also going to write my vertex in my point here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it in this purple. I'm gonna say two, negative nine, and I'm going to label that in my table as a vertex, okay? And we know that our axis of symmetry is down here, or is it x equals positive two, so it's gonna be this fertile line. So everything will be reflected across, oh, you guys couldn't see that, sorry. Everything will be reflected across this line, all right? So what we're gonna do now, oh, also, we can identify our minimum, right, or our maximum. Well, let's see. We're gonna go ahead and see if it's a minimum or a maximum, but we know it's gonna have to be negative nine because that is the y value of our vertex. We don't know if it's a min or a max yet, so we'll see. So guys, now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can identify some other x points and we can go ahead and try to fill these out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna identify my other x points and let's go with zero and one, all right? And then on this side, we're gonna say three and four. So zero, one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill out the rest of my table like this. And remember what we said, our C value is always going to be that y-intercept, all right? So when you are in standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, your c value is that y-intercept. So we know that one of our points would have to be zero, um, oh, negative five, so it's gonna be down here. One, two, three, Sorry about that. So we know one of our points is gonna have to be down there. Ignore that guy up there. So in order to find our other values, what we can do is we can go ahead and we can plug this in to our original equation, all right? So we can do this by saying, all right, well, my original equation was y equals all this um, x squared minus four x minus five. Now I'm gonna plug in a zero and I'm gonna plug in a one and we're gonna see what happens. So I'm gonna say, okay, y is equal to, and instead of x squared, I'm going to say that my new point is zero squared, because that's my x value. And then we say minus four times zero, and then we say minus five. Well, that is going to give me zero squared, minus four times zero, that's zero, zero minus zero, minus five, so your y is equal to negative five. So in this case, my y is equal to negative five, which we already have as our point right here. And what we can do now is we can just reflect this across our axis of symmetry, and we can see that our other point would just be right there, all right? And so that would be at four, negative five, all right? So we can reflect it right there. Now we'll go ahead and do another point, and so I'm gonna pick one in this case, all right? So now I'm gonna say, all right, y is equal to, and instead of x squared, I'm gonna say one squared minus four times one, 
and then minus 5, because our equation was x squared minus 4x minus 5. So that becomes 1 squared minus 4 minus 5. So then what we have is 1 minus 4 is negative 3 minus 5. That's going to give us a negative 8. So my y will be equal to um, negative 8 in that case. All right? So we're going to say, okay, so then my other point would be 1 and then negative 8. Go ahead and do that guy right here. And then if we reflect it across our axis of symmetry, we see that it's also going to be 3, negative 8. And so what you see, guys, is that in our table, my vertex um, is in the center. And then what happens is my y values on either side of my vertex are increasing. So that means that my line is actually increasing. So what you can see here is that my parabola is going to look a little bit like this, okay? Now this isn't perfect by any means, but this is a pretty good looking little parabola here, all right? For y equals x squared minus 4x minus 5. Now if we want to think about what our domain is going to be, remember our domain of a continuous quadratic function is all real numbers. Remember we do that little double R right there. That means all real numbers, okay? And our range is going to be everything, all of my Y values that are greater than negative nine. And we remember this because our minimum, oh, and we know that this is going to be a minimum, don't we? because it's the lowest value of our parabola. And our range is going to be y is greater than or equal to negative nine. Because remember, that is the value, that is the y value of our vertex, okay? So this is how you graph a quadratic equation just by using, um, just by using your numbers in your head. You don't even need a calculator, okay? So this is what it looks like when we graph um, a quadratic equation. So now, so now we're going to move on and we are going to do y equals 1 half x squared plus 4x. And so what I want you guys to notice about this equation, first of all, is we have ax squared plus bx, but there is no c. So that is kind of like there is a plus 0. All right, so we, the very first thing that we want to do is we want to find that axis of symmetry. So we are going to identify our A and our B and our C. So our A in this case is 1 half. Our B is 4 because our 1 half is the coefficient of x squared. Our um, B um, is the coefficient to our x, which is 4. And then our C in this case is 0, all right? And we don't want to forget that that zero, that is going to be our y-intercept, all right, which is very nice to remember, okay? We don't want to forget that that's our y-intercept. But now we're going to go ahead and we are going to find our axis of symmetry, okay? So we are going to do that with the equation x equals negative b over 2a. So I'm going to say, all right, x is equal to negative b, which is my 4 over 2 times a, which is 1 half. So that ends up being negative 4 over 1, which is just negative 4. So my axis of symmetry in this case is x is equal to negative 4. Now that we know our axis of symmetry, we can go ahead and plug our negative 4 back into our equation in order to find our y value on the vertex, okay? The vertex is very important. We want to find our vertex. So I'm going to say, okay, y equals 1 half, and instead of x squared, we're going to put in our x value, negative 4 squared plus 4 times x, which is negative 4, all right? So that would give us y equals, and we have 1 half times positive 16, so that would be 8, and then 4 times negative 4 
is negative 16. So y equals 8 minus 16, which is going to give us negative 8. So my y value of the vertex is going to be negative 8. So here we are. Our vertex is going to be negative 4, and then negative 8. All right. So if we were going to go ahead and graph that vertex now, I would say, all right, negative 4 and negative 8. So it would be down here on the graph, all right? I'm also going to put negative 4 and negative 8 in my table. I'm going to label it as the vertex or the V. And what we want to do is we want to come up with some other points on either side of this that will help. Now here's the deal. Over here on this problem, I just went by ones, which is fine. But I want you guys to think ahead here. Because we have a one half in front of my x squared, we are actually going to go by twos this time so that when we multiply it out, it will be able to divide a little bit more easily. So in this case, I want to go ahead and say negative eight and negative six. And then we're going to say negative two and zero. And guys, what's really cool is remember what I talked about, how the y-intercept is zero. So that means one of my points is going to have to be zero, zero. So here's the thing, guys. If we already know that one of our points is zero, zero, we can reflect that. We didn't do that on the first one, but we can reflect that across our axis of symmetry. So we can say, okay, that's four, and then I'm going to reflect it. So my other point across here would be negative eight, zero. So in this case, guys, we only need to do, we only need to plug it in one time into the equation to find these other points. So we can either plug in negative six or we can plug in negative two, all right? And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna plug in negative six because it's right up here. And I'm gonna say, all right, y is equal to, and we have one half, and instead of x squared, we have um, oops, negative six squared, and then plus four, and then times negative six. So I'm gonna make that black and simple. So we have negative six here. So we have y equals one half, instead of x squared, plus four, plus six, and then plus zero. So we have y equals, let's see here, one half times 36, so that's going to be 18. And then 4 times negative 6 is negative 24. So 18 minus 24 is negative 6. Well, would you look at that? Y, when, when x is equal to negative 6, my y is also equal to negative 6. Well, isn't that cool? So we say negative 6 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. Okay, and then we can reflect that across our axis of symmetry. We can also reflect it on our table, and we see that our other value would be negative two, negative six. So if I was going to draw a graph of this lovely parabola, it would look a little bit, now my parabola's, oh, it's not a very good curve. There we go, and that's okay. Okay, so now we can go ahead and now that we have graphed it, we can fill out the rest of our information. So we can look here and we can say, okay, is it a minimum or is it a maximum? Well, I think it's pretty clear that we are dealing with the lowest point, so we are dealing with a minimum. And remember, your minimum is your y value of your vertex, so it's that negative 8. And then our domain is all real numbers because our x values go forever in both directions because it's a continuous quadratic function. So it's that all real numbers. And our range is going to be y. And because it's we are dealing with everything greater than the lowest point, all the y values greater than or equal to negative 8. And we got that negative 8 from our y value of our vertex, all right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here and we are going to look at these next problems. 
Now these next two problems are interesting because they are not in um, slope. They are not in quadratic standard form. So we need to get them in quadratic standard form before we do anything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little line right here so that we're not confused. So this is not in quadratic standard form. So we want to get it to be y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So the y needs to be by itself. So the first thing that we're going to do, so we want to get our y by itself. So what we need to do is we need to subtract the 8 off of this side to cancel it out, and we need to subtract our 3x squared. But remember, whatever you do to one side, you got to do the other. So we're going to need to subtract an 8 and a 3x squared off of the right side. So what we are left with on this side is we are left with y is equal, and I'm going to kind of whoop because we need a little bit more room. And then over here on the right side, we have negative 3x squared plus 12x minus 8. So I went ahead and wrote it in the standard form where my x squared was first, and then my x, and then my negative 8. Now that we have it in standard form, we can go ahead and find our axis of symmetry, okay? And remember the formula for our axis to find the axis of symmetry is x, remember for a, for the axis of symmetry, it's x equals negative b over 2a. So I'm going to say, okay, so it's x is equal to negative b, so negative 12 over 2 times a, which is going to be negative 3. So we have negative 12 over negative 6. Negative 12 divided by negative 6 gives me a positive 2. So my x, my axis of symmetry is x equals 2. Now that we know our axis of symmetry, we can go ahead and we can find our, um, we can go ahead and we can find our y value of our vertex, right? So we're going to go back to our original equation and we're going to plug the x in to see what our y value is. So if I go here and I say, okay, y is equal to negative 3, and instead of x squared, we're going to say 2 squared, because that's our x value here, plus 12. Instead of times x, we're going to say times 2, and then minus 8. So that becomes negative 3 times 2 squared is 4, so that's what? Negative 12 plus 24 minus 8. So that would be negative 12 plus 24 minus 8. So that would give us what? y equals 4. So y would be equal to 4 for our vertex. So now the x value of my vertex is 2. The y value of my vertex is 4. All right, so it becomes 2, 4. So if I was going to graph that down here, I would say 2 and then 4. So that would be my vertex. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my vertex in my um, problem right here. All right, so we have 2, 4. Now, if I want to build some x values here, um, earlier when it was a fraction, I skipped my x values, but if it's a whole number, remember our new equation is this y equals 3x squared plus 12x minus 8. It's okay if that's a whole number. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my 0, 1, 2, three, four, and we want to graph two of our equations. Now, here's the thing. One of ours, we can actually find our y-intercept. Remember, the c value, our constant value, is always going to be your y-intercept. So that is where our um, x value is zero. So in this case, we know that one of our values is going to have to be zero negative 8, all right? So we're going to go 0, go down here and graph it at negative 8.
All right. And remember, we already know our axis of symmetry. So we know that it's going to be reflected across our axis of symmetry. So that's 2 and then 2. So this will also be at 4, negative 8. So if we know that one of our y values is 0, negative 8, and 4, negative 8, now we just have to plug in either 1 or 3 to determine the other y value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to bring it down. And I'm going to say, all right, well, y is equal to, and I'm going to pick 1 because 1 is a little bit easier to plug in. y is equal to negative 3 times x squared is going to be, in this case, just 1 squared, which is really nice. And then plus 12x is 12 times 1 and then minus 8. So that becomes negative 3 times 1 squared is just negative 3 times 12 plus 1, time, I mean plus 12 times 1 is just plus 12, and then minus 8. So this becomes negative 3 plus 12 minus 8, so y is equal to negative 1, or no, positive 1, my bad, I'm sorry guys. So that becomes a positive 1. So we see that in this case, it would be, when I have 1, it would be 1. And then we can reflect it across and reflect it in the table. And we see that our other point would be at 3, 1. All right. guys now I'm gonna take a second oh and let's go ahead and fill out the rest of our little chart here all right so this is how it looks when we graph it when we graph that little lovely line I hope you can see that okay my little purple. okay and so this is what our parabola looks like now in this case we're looking and we see that we do have in this case we don't have a minimum but we have a maximum because this is the highest point in our graph. And the highest point in our graph is going to be our y value. So in this case, it would be our y value is 4 is our max, all right? And the domain is just like all of the other continuous quadratic functions. It can be all real numbers in our x values. And then our range in this case, if we take a look at it, it's going to be y, and then it's going to be not greater than positive 4, but less than or equal to positive 4, because positive 4 is the very highest value that it can possibly be. And so we look at that x value, and we see that it would be a positive 4. Now, I'm going to take a second, and I'm going to show you guys something cool. On the calculator, if I went back and I had to solve for this equation, and I go in here and I type in negative 3x squared plus 12x minus 8 into my calculator. So I went to y equals, and I typed it in. And if I hit just graph, you can actually see this parabola show up on your screen okay so that's just if I hit graph and we kind of see what it looks like now if I want to see my table values I can go here and I can go second table and oh I'm way up here at 26 for some reason so I'm gonna scroll back and guys you can see that my table matches it as well I found my vertex that 2 4 and I placed it in the center of my table and you can see that the the um, values surrounding it were 3, 1, and 4, negative 8, 2, 4, 1, 1, 0, negative 8. So guys, you once you find your vertex on your own, you can go ahead and graph it in order to get these values in the table, and that will make it just a little bit easier. And so we'll do that for this next one once we put it in the correct standard form. So let's take a look here. So we have y equals negative 3x squared minus 6x equals negative 7. So it's not in um, standard form right now because our y is not by itself. So we want to get our y 
all by itself. So what we need to do, so I'm going to draw my little line down my equal sign. I'm going to add 3x squared. I'm going to add 6x. But whatever you do to one side, you've got to do it to the other. So I'm going to add 3x squared. I'm going to add 6x to the right side as well. So when we see this, what we get is those lovely guys um, cancel out and we get y is equal to positive 3x squared plus 6x minus 7. All right, so this is our new equation. And what we see from this is now we can go ahead and we can find our axis of symmetry. So this is the equation that we will be working from now, okay? So we want to go ahead and we want to find our axis of symmetry. So remember the axis of symmetry is negative b over 2a. So x is equal to negative b, which is our coefficient x, 6, over 2 times a, which is 3, the coefficient to our x squared. So we have negative 6 over 6. So that's going to be negative 1. So our axis of symmetry is x is equal to negative 1. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use that x value to plug it into our equation to find the y value of our vertex, all right? So we're going to say, okay, y equals, now we plug in this x value. We say 3 instead of x squared. We say negative 1 squared plus 6. Instead of x, we say times negative 1, and then minus 7. So 3 times negative 1 squared would just be, negative 1 squared is just a positive 1. So that's 3 minus 6 minus 7, which would give us, let's see here, is that negative 10, I believe. So my y is equal to negative 10. So on my vertex, my x is equal to negative 1, and my y is equal to negative 10. So now that we know our vertex is going to be negative 1 and negative 10. And I'm going to label that with our little vertex, and I'm going to go ahead and plot it over here on this point. So negative 1 and negative 10, okay? So it's going to be way down there. All right, so now that we know our vertex and we know our axis of symmetry, if we wanted to go ahead and fill out our table, we could do this a few different ways. Remember, we can find our um, y-intercept, which in this case, that would be our y-intercept, which is going to be negative 7. So let's think here. We're going to go negative 1 and then 0, 1, negative 2, negative 3. We're just going to shift right up. So one of my points is going to be 0, negative 7, because that is going to be my y-intercept. All right, so all we would need to do is we would just need to plug in one more point to find our other point. Now we also know it's going to reflect across our axis of symmetry, and it's also going to reflect on our table nicely as well at negative 2 negative 7. But guys, I also want to show you how this will look in our calculator, okay? So if we go to y equals, and I'm going to clear out my equation, I'm going to type in 3x squared plus 6x minus 7, and I want to see what it's going to look like, okay? I think we're off to a pretty good start. That looks like the start of mine. But I'm going to go to second table. When I go here, this is where I can see our lovely little thing. So I found negative 1 and negative 10, and 0 and negative 7, and negative 2 and negative 7. And then I also see on here negative 3 and positive 2. So that's negative 3 and positive 2, and that's 1 and positive 2. So if I graph this, I would say 1 and positive 2 and negative 3 and positive 2, and that reflects very nicely off of our axis of symmetry. And when we graph this, you can see, oh gosh, my parabola is so skinny. 
So when I graph parabolas, I have to like kind of be sketchy about it. Like I don't do it in one fluid line. I kind of do it in little lines. And there we go. There's a lovely little graph of our parabola and it reflects really nicely across of our axis of symmetry. So if we want to go ahead and list the rest of our things here, let's see here, is this a minimum or a maximum? Well, because it's facing up, we know that it's going to be a minimum. And the minimum will be at our y value, which is negative 10. Our domain is going to be the same as all other continuous quadratic functions, it means they continue to go on of all real numbers. And our range is going to be everything that's greater than our minimum. Okay, if you have a minimum, everything's going to be greater than that. So that's going to be y is greater than or equal to that negative 10, that value from our vertex. All right, so this is how you graph um, a parabola, a quadratic equation from standard form. All right, now we are going to jump on to page three of our notes, and now we are going to be graphing quadratic equations that start off in vertex form, all right? Our vertex form is um, f of x equals a parentheses x minus h close parentheses squared plus k, all right? Now we already did the whole ax, squared plus bx plus c. So these are different numbers, okay? The a is still the same, but now we have an h and a k. Now the nice thing about vertex form is it gives you the vertex, all right? The vertex is actually in the form. It is the h, the k, that's your x and your y. And then all we have to do is if we know our vertex, that gives us the information we need for our axis of symmetry, for our min and our max, all these other things, and we just have to find the other two points on the other side of the vertex. So guys, you have to remember, we are not given our y-intercept in vertex form. We are only given our vertex in vertex form. All right, so we have our lovely example right here. So what we are going to do is we are going to see and we say, okay, our first example is f of x equals x, parentheses, x minus 3 squared plus 1. So guys, my h in this case, I'm going to go ahead and um, let's do it in green. Why not? So guys, my h in this case, the h is always the one inside the parentheses. And guys, um, a silly example is that if you're in your, if you're in parentheses, it's like you're in jail and you did, you got in jail because you did the opposite of what you were supposed to. So this becomes not, h is not negative three, but it's positive three because it's the opposite. When you pull it out of the parentheses, it becomes a positive. So it's h equals positive three, okay? And then my k is this number, lovely number on the end here, and that is going to be a positive 1. Now, it's on the outside of the parentheses, so we're not going to change it. So my h is 3, and my k is 1. So guys, now we can go ahead and we know that our vertex is just 3, 1. We can figure that out just by looking at the equation. And if we know that our vertex is 3, 1, we can go ahead and graph that 3, 1. There we go. Okay. And we know that our axis of symmetry is going to be the equation x equals 3. My axis of symmetry is not 3. It is x equals 3. So I can go ahead and graph that just down this little line. So everything will reflect off of that little symmetrical line right there. And now what we need to do is we need to plug in some points on either side of the vertex so that we can actually figure out what the points are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my original equation, this f of x, and I'm going to plug in two points. I'm going to plug in a 2 and a 1, all right? And then we'll reflect it across. So I'm going to say, all right, f 
and I'm going to plug in a 2. Alright guys? Oh, lovely. And so, right here where my x is supposed to be, I'm going to plug in a 2 and then say minus 3 squared plus 1. So now we can see what f of 2 would be. And this would be 2 minus 3, which is just negative 1 squared plus 1. Well, that just becomes 1 plus 1, which is 2. So that means my point here is now going to be 2 is the x, and then 2, this 2, is my y. So my point is 2, 2. So I can plug in 2, I'm going to graph that, 2, 2. And we can reflect that across the axis of symmetry at 3, 2. Or at, I guess that's 4, 2. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, but I'm going to do it with a different point, okay? So now I'm going to do it with f of, let's see here, let's do 1. So we're going to say, all right, f of 1. And I'm going to say is equal to, let's see here, instead of parentheses x minus 3, I'm going to say 1 minus 3 squared plus 1. Well, 1 minus 3 is negative 2 negative 2 squared plus 1. Well, that's positive 4 plus 1, so that's 5. So my point that we just found is positive 1. That was my x value. And then my y value that we found was 5. So it's positive 1, 5. So if I graph that, that's positive 1, 1, 2, 3. All right, so this is what my little graph is going to look like. I'm going to do my best to draw it here to go through the points. There we go. Draw my little graph. Now that we've drawn our graph, we can easily identify if we need a minimum or a maximum. In this case, I think it's pretty clear that it is the lowest point on the graph is the vertex, so it's going to be a minimum. And our minimum is sitting at our y value, which is 1, okay? Our domain in this case is the same that it's going to be for all continuous quadratic functions, which is all real numbers, all right? If it's a continuous quadratic function, it's going to be all real numbers. Our range, if we take a look at our range, um, it's going to be all of our values that are greater than our vertex because everything is bigger than the vertex, not smaller. So it's greater than the vertex, so y is greater than or equal to 1. So this is how we graph um, from a vertex form. So let's go ahead and do this last example, and then we will be all done today. So we have example 2 here, f of x equals 1 half, parentheses x minus 4, close parentheses squared, minus 2. So in this case, if we wanted to identify our h and our k, we would need to look inside of our parentheses. So we would look here and we'd say, okay, our h is equal to not negative 4, but because it's in the parentheses, it's opposite. So it's a positive 4. And then our k is on the outside here, and our k is the same, so our k is going to be a negative 2. So if it's on the outside of the parentheses, it doesn't change signs. So our vertex in this case would be 4, negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that. So that's 4, negative 2. And our axis of symmetry, once we know our vertex, we know that our axis of symmetry is just going to be the y value there. x is equal to 4, so it's going to be a vertical line because it's x equals, and it's going to be just right here. So everything will reflect right across that axis of symmetry. Now what's going to happen now is in order to find the other two values, we would go ahead or we need to find two more points on each side of the vertex. 
So I'm going to plug in some easy points. And remember, we have a 1 half. So that means we want to choose numbers that are divisible by 2, OK? So in this case, I'm going to pick, um, let's see here. Let's do a 2, and then let's do a 0, all right? So if we plugged in f is f of x2, 2, for our equation here, and we said 1 half times, instead of x here, we do 2 here, because that's what's our x value, minus 4 squared minus 2. Well, 2 minus 4 is negative 2, so that becomes 1 half negative 2 squared minus 2. Well, negative 2 squared is positive 4. 4 divided time, and 4 times 1 half is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So our point in this case would be 2 and then 0. Our y value is 0. So our x value is 2 and our y value is 0. So if we graphed that, it would just be right here at 2, 0. If we graphed it on the other side, cross our axis of symmetry here, we see that our other point would be up there at 6, 0. So we have one point is 2, 0. We need to find our other point. So I'm going to plug in f of 0 here. Oops, I meant to do a pink color and I forgot. Sorry about that. And so that's going to be equal to 1 half times 0 minus 4 squared and then minus 2. So 0 minus 4 squared is just negative 4. So that's 1 half negative 4 squared minus 2. So if we plug that in, we would see negative 4 squared is positive 16 times 1 half is 8. 8 minus 2 is 6. So my point, my other point that we'd be looking for is 0, positive 6. All right, so we have 0 and then positive 6. So if I graphed that, I would say 0 and then 1, 2, Okay, and then if I graph it across the axis of symmetry, there it is. And if I go ahead, and now that I have my five points plotted, I can graph it, and we see that it is a parabola that faces up. If it's a parabola that is facing up, we know that it has, the vertex is at the minimum, or at the lowest point, and our minimum would be our y value which is negative 2. Our domain is going to be the same that it is for all continuous quadratic functions, which is all real numbers, because it's any, any x value is possible. Our y values would just increase, increase, increase really, really high, but technically we can do anything out there. And then our range, remember, is our y values, and it's everything, we find our vertex or our minimum, and it's everything that's greater then are equal to that minimum because there's, there's no values that are below it, right? So it's y is greater than or equal to negative 2. So this is how you graph a quadratic function when you are given it in vertex form, okay? Important things to remember when you're in vertex form, you just find your vertex. And once you have that vertex, um, <clears throat> And you are able to find all of your other information. The biggest thing to remember is that h, your x value of your vertex, is always going to flip the sign, all right, because it's inside that parentheses, and it's got to flip that sign. All right, guys, thank you all so much, and I hope you do um, good luck and do well on your homework.